The Honda Civic is an incredibly important car for Honda. In 1973, Honda was just a small automaker in America, having sold only about 35,000 units. But in 1974, with the first full year of Civic sales, they sold 40,000 Civics. It's now one of the best selling cars in North America and the first generation Civic was a hatchback with a sedan being added in the second generation. Now in 2020, the Civic is sold as a hatchback, a sedan and as a two door coupe. Today, we're gonna take a look at this vehicle because it has a lot of stiff competition from the Mazda 3 and Toyota Corolla. We're gonna see what makes it stand out and why it is still such a great car and why it is still selling so hot. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to Gas Guzzlers. Help us grow. We can do more cool stuff with more cool cars. Also, a big thanks to Jim Coleman Honda here in Clarksville, especially Mike, for letting us take a look at this Honda. If you're interested in buying a new Honda in the Maryland area, their website and his email will be in the description below. All right, guys, let's get to it. Here at the front of the car, I think it does a good job of really looking sporty. Out of all the competitors, it really is the sportiest looking of the three sort of main competitors in this area. You have these LED headlights on your upper trims with halogen fog lights. You do have the black grill uh, pieces right here on the Civic hatchbacks. There is a lot of black plastic on the front of this vehicle. Some more painted bodywork would make it feel more premium, which remember this vehicle is approaching $30,000. So that premium touch would be appreciated. The side of the vehicle is where this uh, hatchback most distinguishes itself from its other Civic brothers. First of all, I want to talk about the hatchback in question. It looks more like a sportback actually. It's somewhere in between a hatchback and a sportback because it's not actually that steep of a slope compared to other vehicles. So that's interesting to note, especially when we get to talking about cargo room. You do have these 18 inch alloy wheels here on this uh, sport touring trim. And then the other thing I want to draw your attention to is this little window kink right here that Honda's been doing on a lot of their vehicles. I did not like it at first, but it has grown on me more recently. Um, other than that, you have really nice body lines running down the side of the vehicle, some nice fading in and out. Uh, it's nice and low, nice and sporty, really gives that nice muscular appearance, which is hard to pull off on a small vehicle, but they really did. Now let's talk about your rear right here. It is certainly busy, that would describe it. You have not one, but two baby wings sort of right there uh, that give some styling, sporty look to the back. You do have these trademark Honda Lobster Claw taillights now, which look really good, easy to identify when you're zooming down the highway, passing everyone in your Civic hatchback. Um, down here, you have a lot of fake vents going on. I wish they did something else, um, but that's all right. You, you tend to find fake vents on cars these days. It is unfortunately how it is. Uh, you have a little diffuser down here, and then you have dual center mount exhaust, which look really, really cool. I like that a lot. Let's talk about your cargo room in this vehicle. It is why you get the hatch after all. You're gonna find 23 cubic feet of cargo space with your passenger seats up. Putting those down is gonna double your space to 46 cubic feet. So definitely a lot of usable space back here. Let's talk about the trim levels that you can get for the Civic hatchback. The LX trim is the base trim coming in at around $22,000. And on that, you're gonna find automatic climate control, automatic high beams, and a 1.5 liter turbo engine that's cranking out around 174 horsepower. You're gonna also find that engine on the EX and EXL trims. At $24,000, the EX will get you heated front seats, a power moonroof. It's also gonna get you dual zone climate control and Honda Lane Watch. Honda Lane Watch is this little camera in the passenger side mirror, which will watch your blind spot, because remember, there is no blind spot warning in this vehicle. At $25,000, the EXL will get you an eight-way power adjustable driver's seat. It's also gonna get you a leather interior and an auto dimming rear view mirror. And at around $28,000, topping the line is the Sport Touring model, which will get you features like auto on off LED headlights, a premium 12 speaker sound system, along with those really cool center mount dual exhausts we saw at the back. All Civics come with Honda Sensing. Honda Sensing is Honda's standard suite of safety features, which includes collision mitigation, road departure mitigation, lane keeping assist, and also adaptive cruise control. Powering the Sport 20 is a 1.5 liter turbo inline four uh, engine that is cranking out 177 pound feet of torque and 180 horsepower. You can expect about 29 miles to a gallon in the city, 37 highway for 32 combined. And that's sent uh, via CVT or six speed manual to the front wheels. 
The interior of the Civic looks good, but it's starting to show its age. Remember, this was redesigned in 2016, and you can definitely tell. Now, that said, it has aged well. The materials in here seem to be mostly like injection molded plastic around you, but it's nice and soft touch. You do have some nice, interesting material up here on your dash and some nice metal accenting going on. So overall, it's not a bad place to be. It has aged, but it has aged well. Roominess is good. The seats are nice and comfortable. They are are heated um you, you don't have cooled seats on this one but they do feel good they have this neat little race pattern going down the center so overall it is a pleasurable place to be even if you can tell its age and now you join me in the driver's seat. Here is the steering wheel. The leather on it feels really good. It's not scratchy, cheap leather. It just feels really high quality. I wish they emptied out this little section of the steering wheel, but that's not a major complaint. You have this nice accenting right here. Your buttons are nice and easy to reach. I like how they do them circular style. They do feel a little cheap to press, but that's okay. It's not a huge complaint of mine. Um, your stalks behind that feel really good, but what do I see? Terrible paddle shifters right there. They are cheap plastic, but this is a cheaper car, so I guess that is acceptable. Um, I just don't like when you know, cars that aren't supposed to be sporty or are expensive have paddles, but it's not as big of an offense on this vehicle. Uh, still, some nicer paddles would be better. Uh, you do have this nice stalk the stalks have really nice actuation really nice turning and then you have that cluster right there it's not super customizable um, but it's definitely bright it's clear what's going on it shows you the information you need to know you have a nice big tachometer with your speed nice and bold so i really like how that's done and you have your fuel gauge i really like how they do that with the little red marker that moves down the side and, and the temperature gauge right there so they did a really nice job there I'll show you a clip of me getting into the driver's seat. It's a nice experience. It's easy to get in and you have a really good view out. Let's talk infotainment. If you've seen one of our other Honda reviews of a non-Civic product like the CRV, you might notice that the background color in this system is red. So it's nice and sporty compared to the blue they use in some of their other products. This is an older system. This is not the new system that they have in the Accord or in the Odyssey. And it's definitely part of what shows its age in this vehicle. You can see as I swipe to the side, they thought of some nice little things like this animation, but overall it just really shows its age and it doesn't look that good especially if I go like the navigation. This is a seven inch unit with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So that is a redeeming feature. You have these nice physical buttons on the side right here. So you can see I can go to the home. So you can navigate through pretty easily. A little quirk is they have all these pages of just empty apps and they only give you one app to fill it all. So um, that's sort of an interesting touch. I guess they expect you to fill in your own, but that's a lot of pages for apps. Um, let's look at some of the apps they give you by default. My favorite is the calculator, which lets you do advanced math, not just multiplication, division, all that. It also lets you do logarithms, if you would like. So you can see here, you can do all sorts of craziness, all sorts of math craziness. A little quirk, a little calculator quirk is that for the log, you have to delete each letter one at a time. So um, not your TI-84 calculator, but the most advanced car calculator I've ever seen, that's for sure. I'll give you a look at the backup camera right here. You can see it is pretty grainy and you do not have turn guidance right here. You do have multiple angles though, so that is sort of neat, but it's just not really up to snuff in 2020. Um, so that is one place to improve in the future. I'll also show you the camera. I mentioned the lane watch. This is the view that comes up when you turn on your turn signal, your passenger side. Uh, you can get an idea if there are any objects in your blind spot. So overall, the system's definitely showing its age. It is still usable. Uh, it's not so bad that it's unusable, but it is one of the older parts of this car. And down here, you have some nice physical buttons for your climate controls. You have nice physical dials too. They feel really good. They're nice and textured. Really like how they did that. You have heated seats uh, for your driver and your passenger right there. One really cool thing about this area is a little, you have this little USB on a cable that you can pull out so you can attach any sort of phone you want or anything like that. So that is a really nice touch. And right here is sort of your driving command center. You can turn on your eco mode, you can put on your electronic parking brake, and you have the brake hold feature, which will essentially prevent transmission creep when you're at a stoplight. Um, if we look at your gear selector, it feels really good. Honda is switching to button-based uh, gear selectors in their newer vehicles, so I'm sure the Civic will get that soon. 
Taking a look in your center area right here, you do have a nice deep cubby that goes all the way back. This is very customizable. So first of all, you have this armrest that slides forward and back. You have cup holders in here with grips that slide forward and back, and you can open this up to reveal more storage space. You also have a USB port down there along with a super large cup holder in case you have any 7-Eleven big gulps or whatnot. I also wanna mention that under here, you do have more storage sort of under your center area. So that is really nice. You have that big pass-through storage right there. So that is really cool to see. Lots of storage and good use of space for a small vehicle. Here in the back, first of all, plenty of room. The Civic is a smaller vehicle, but I have plenty of legroom. I have plenty of headroom too. Um, so really, you can definitely fit two adults back here. In terms of a, uh, being a third, the middle seat is pretty skinny and you have a pretty tall hump here. So that's probably not gonna happen, but you'll definitely get two back here. You have heated outboard seats, which is an awesome touch. I found it's a little hard to use the button because either it's high or on one side, low on the other, and you have to get centered in the middle. Uh, and sometimes I overshoot it, but that's just a little quirk to note. Another little quirk to note back here is that this is the first time I've seen unlabeled window switches in, the, in a car. I can't think of the last time I've seen those except for in this vehicle. So that's sort of neat and interesting. Um, and you do have a nice little pull out here. Let's talk about some of your uh, other amenities. You can definitely fit uh, nice big drinks in here. You have two different cup holder sizes and you also have a nice padded armrest. It's actually really padded, very, very nice. Um, one other thing I want to know is there are no climate vents back here, but it is a smaller vehicle. So the climate vents up front should be okay. One thing I forgot to mention in the interior guys is that this car has aluminum pedals, which is super cool for a sports focused car. Love that detail. Look, overall the interior of this car is getting dated, but if that doesn't bother you, then there is a lot to like here. I mean, you do have some solid quality. You have pretty nice materials in there and you're getting usable technology. You're also getting that Honda sensing assistance system and you're getting really sporty looks, really distinguishing looks that you aren't gonna find elsewhere in this segment. A big thanks to Jim Coleman Honda for letting us take a look at this Honda Civic hatchback. Thank you all for watching. You guys are the reason we do this. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and help us grow. It means a lot. Thank you all so much for watching. We will see you in next week's video.